Well, it's a bright sunny winter morning. I'm going to show you what the inside of this steering rack looks like. Alright, well I've got two steering racks today. I've got this one off of a 2016 and up Toyota Camry. And this one is off of a 2016 and up Chevy Cruze. I'm going to take these apart and see what it looks like inside. Now normally the steering rack's mounted somewhere in front of the firewall on the vehicle. And it's mounted on these two bushings. This here is your input shaft, it comes from your steering wheel. As you rotate this, it translates the rotation motion into a horizontal translation motion which moves your inner tie rods which are screwed in here. So on this vehicle, the steering rack is located on the subframe behind the engine. You can see it's this silver thing right here where the steering shaft goes into the steering rack. You've got your inner tie rod boot for the driver's side here and there's another one on the passenger side. Now in this case it's a hydraulic setup so you've got these two hydraulic lines going into the steering rack itself. Now the input shaft leads to a pinion gear inside of the casting here and that translates the motion into a translation motion through the rack. You can see the teeth for the rack right here when you move it all the way out and that's how it gets its name, rack and pinion. This here is a 2016 Chevy Cruze steering rack. It's made of aluminum. This here is your input shaft and then on the ends there you've got your output shafts that move in and out in order to swing your wheel. There's also a bellow that goes over here to protect the ends. Now this rack is pretty special because it's got this giant electric motor to help with the steering assist. So what it does, it reads from the input sensor over here, it goes to a little computer inside here and that determines how much assist to give to make it easier for you to steer. Now coming along the back of the motor here you've got these two giant electrical connectors for your 12 volt connections to power the motor. Then you've got your input coming from your input shaft up here on the sensor and you've also got your computer controls to go into there. Now this steering rack uses three bushings to mount to the subframe. Now over here on this side we've got the motor where it connects to the rack and then you've got the output shaft here which is actually a little spiral gear. You can see as I turn the input shaft. Now as a comparison you can see as I move the shaft on this side it's got linear teeth which is pretty cool. First thing I'm going to do is show you what the rotation sensor looks like on the input shaft. Just going to remove these three Torx bolts here. I'm going to pop this cover off got a little seal on it. So you can see here when I rotate the input shaft that this metal part also rotates and that's picked up by the sensor inside of here and fed through these wires to the computer. What's also cool is there's a little bearing inside of here. Alright so over here on the motor side I'm going to remove the shroud here by removing all of these Torx bolts going around here. Alright now we're going to remove the shroud and we've got a little drive belt system going on here. Now if we take a closer look at this drivetrain here, you'll see that this belt is made by gates. It's got some really fine teeth on here, and it goes from a smaller gear to a bigger gear for more torque. Next I'm going to remove the back of this motor cover. It's got three Torx bolts here. Alright, and that's the computer inside of there. Now it looks like there's just one more bolt holding this motor on and I can take it off. And I can remove the motor from the assembly. And that's the belt. So this here is your electric assist motor. It's basically just a DC motor and it's responsible for assisting your steering as you're turning the steering wheel. It's got a couple of connectors here that connect to the computer over here. So now the computer will take the input from the vehicle's dynamic system as well as the steering input sensor on the input shaft and do some computation before it outputs to the motor to tell the motor what to do with the steering rack. So for example if you're in sport mode it'll reduce the steering assist going to the electric motor to give you a little bit more feedback. Now what I find interesting is why GM chose to put this computer right down near the steering rack instead of up under the dash which is probably more safe. Now over here on the electric motor side of the shaft we've got this nice looking spiral gear here and what that does it takes the rotational motion of your electric motor assisting the steering rack and translates it into translational motion this way to turn your wheel. Now there's a couple of bolts here I'm going to take off. Alright now that those screws are removed I'm just going to take off the gear. So here we've got the rotational part that that gear was sitting on and it looks like it goes into a bearing here and then that bearing is screwed into this housing around here. Alright so since this bearing is screwed into the housing I'm going to make an incision around here and around this side to see if I can get it out. Alright, so I got all these little bits and pieces off with the grinder and I was able to get the sleeve out. It's still pretty warm. And then I can pull the shaft out like this. And then inside here you can see this is a free spinning bearing as well as the spiral gear that turns the rotational motion into translational motion. This here is actually a recirculating ball type steering so if you look in there you can see tiny little ball bearings and that runs in between this rack here and that'll take your rotational motion of this guy from the spiral and translate it into a translational motion. So as I slowly take this off here you can see all the beans spill out. So you can see there's a bunch of little tiny balls inside of there. That's the ball bearings that run along this rack. Alright so the final thing I want to get off is this pinion shaft. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this nut right here as well as grind off this bolt right here. So this is just a 17 millimeter nut and that's just a pressure plate with a spring inside. Alright so I'm going to grind off this internal bolt. Alright so I've grinded off this head nut here 
and that reveals this nut right here that's attached to the end of the pinion shaft. Alright, so I'm going to put my 17mm socket on that and attempt to break it loose. Alright, and there's some kind of bearing at the bottom here to balance the pinion shaft. And then I can remove the pinion shaft once my steering connector is disconnected. And that reveals the pinion gear. And then I can remove the rack from the housing. The solid steel piece of rod. It's got straight teeth on this end and the spiral teeth on this end. And of course it's threaded on the end for your inner tie rods. And then of course you've got left your housing, which is fairly light, it's a cast aluminum. And it's got these bushings pressed into it for your mounting points. So here's a closer look at the pinion gear. It's got a spiral gear on that end that engages with the flat teeth on the steering rack, which allow you to turn the steering of the car. So here's a closer look at the input shaft sensor. It's made by TRW. And as you rotate it here, you've got these two gears that rotate. And there's two chips inside of there that somehow pick up the signal to get the rotation and position of the shaft. And that's pretty much what's inside of a steering rack from a Chevy Cruze. Now I really don't have any idea of how this thing looks like inside or how it works. This will be a learning experience for both of us. Now since this is for a vehicle with electric power steering, you'll see that the unit is a lot more simpler and there's no hydraulic lines going into the rack. Now I don't really see any other way to get into this rack besides this Torx bolt right here. Alright, I'm going to see if I can take off this bolt here. This is a special tool that you'll need to get this bolt off. Well, I've got my brother's underwear again. I'm going to take that off because that's really, really hot right now from the grinder. And then there's this little spring inside of here. So what I'm going to do next is grind around this circle here to see if I can get this inner circle to pop out. That's like a cap. So it appears that the responsibility of this cap and this screw was to apply some pressure to the rack because now I notice that it's much easier to turn the rack from the input shaft. So it doesn't seem like it's easy to get this input shaft out so I can get the rack out from this way. So the next method of attack I'm going to do is make an incision along the input shaft here. Alright, with that slit in there now I'm going to peel out this top seal here. Just a piece of plastic. And that reveals an internal hex. So I've chopped off a cross section of this here and you can see there's threads here for this internal hex bolt. Now underneath the hex bolt there's also this spacer here so what I'm going to do is chop the rest of the sleeve off so that we can get the input shaft out. Alright so I've got a couple more bits and pieces off from around the input shaft here. Now I can take out this threaded nut and then the input shaft can be removed. Alright now that the input shaft has been removed I can remove the rack from the housing. And that's it right there. Now I'll just get my brother's underwear here again and clean up that grease. Now this here is your pinion gear that's connected to the input shaft and this is your output which is the rack itself. It's just a linear gear. If you look closely here at the pinion gear, we've got this bearing here that it rotates along and it's got this warm look to the gear. Now if we take a closer look at the rack itself, it's made of a really hard heavy steel which makes the housing pretty light relatively. On the end here it's got a threaded portion where your inner tire rods connect to. And then of course you've got your linearly geared section here and that's to allow your pinion to rotate on it and translate the rotational motion into translation motion to cause your wheels to turn sideways. Now you'll notice that the pitch between these teeth are very even. On vehicles that have variable steering you'll see that the inner part will have a different pitch than the outer part and that's to allow better steering feedback on center while still giving you enough steering swing in parking lot maneuvers. And this is pretty much all the parts that make up the Toyota steering rack.